My name is Kelly Fellows. Well, first of all, Kelly, thank you so much for coming today. I know it takes a lot of courage to talk about what's happening. The situation happened with the oil spill, and we were just happened to be there, and I saw an ad on Craigslist to get mm -hmm. Haswhopper training. I love animals. I love the idea of going and trying to help. Um, I want to go take this class and see if maybe there's something we can do. Because of the Exxon thing, we had seen them cleaning up birds and things sure. like that. And once we got into it, we realized, no, they're not going to let us touch the animals. But it was an opportunity to still help, to still try to clean the beaches, and to try to help the environment and give back. And that's really how it started. So we took the training and went right in to work and um, really just was on standby for a long time before the oil really started hitting and they put us out there but you know through the whole thing they had been telling us you know safety is first you know your safety is our number one concern you will be in respirators we'll have you protected so because this is a dangerous chemical they gave us all the information on that they gave us all this information on how they would um, decontaminate they would have decontamination areas for us and as we started going out there well there were no respirators <laughs> there you know we did have Tyvek outfits the biohazard outfits but they didn't have us put them on all the way I mean maybe one time I can think of they actually had us fully suited the rest of the time it was pull them up to your waist and take the arms and tie them around your waist and put on the gloves and the glasses and straw hats and that's what we went out there in and um, that made me a little nervous because you could definitely smell it. I mean, being right there at the edge of the water as more and more tar was coming in, the smells would just, it would make you have headaches. Everyone was complaining of headaches. We were, at, we were in Long Beach. Um, we were um, in Gulfport. And it was just pretty much all along Beach Road, all along Highway 90, they would station us in different so, yeah, areas. Yeah, every day it might be a different location. Predominantly Long Beach. We had headaches. Everyone on the bus complained of headaches. Everyone complained of their chest hurting. Um, a lot of people coughing, that kind of thing. Um, not only on my bus, on friends' buses, and my family is out there on their buses also. Um, so it wasn't just any one bus that this was happening to. Friends that we've met along the way, um, I know a foreman that was in the hospitalized, I mean, right off the bat, her asthma, she was diagnosed with pneumonia, and um, they tried to just tell her that it was anything but due to the oil, and everyone was given excuses, oh, you have the flu, it's going around, that kind of thing, bronchial issues, oh, well, it's allergies. Every excuse known to man was given, except for them to actually say, this is coming from One the day, oil. last week, we went out and they told us, do not put on the Tyvex. And everyone was, you know, everyone was complaining, well, why aren't we at least putting the Tyvex on? No, we're not going to wear them. We don't need them. You know, they were safety officer telling us beforehand, no, you do not need them. It's okay to go out there. There was a lot of oil on the beach, a lot of tar balls coming up. Balls, okay. With each time the uh, waves would come crashing in, I mean, we would just get it cleared. And then it would just look like we hadn't. It was just everywhere. And so I was trying to get the bags ripped off and get them open because I had two guys that were shoveling into my bag. And so my job was as we would get just a little bit, 15 or 20 pounds isn't much. So I would drag them off and have to tie it. And as you're wrapping it to tie it, the bags were thick. And in order to get the bag to tie off by making a knot, you would have to reach your arm through it to pull. And as I'm doing that, I was trying to be careful because you could see oil touching it everywhere. Well, in working, I looked down and I had it. I had it on my arm here, I had it here, and in my gloves. It was all in my gloves because the minute I saw it on my skin, I panicked because it scared me because I really wanted to be in a Tyvex and they refused. I went to my foreman and my foreman had me go see the safety officer and by that time the project manager over the whole thing was there too and I was telling them, look, I want an incident report. I need something done because my arm is burning. And so 
they were looking at each other, a safety officer and the project manager, and they were saying, is there anything here? Is there anything here? And they said, there's no ambulance on site. And they said, well, where is the ambulance? Well, we don't know. And so I, t I steadily, look, I, my arm is burning. I want an incident report. I want one. I want somebody to write this down. And I'm looking at my foreman, my project manager, and this safety officer. And he says, let me call my boss. So out comes another safety officer. <laughs> and so I'm telling him the same thing. So they, what they did was they took me to um, one of the porta potties that's there for the public to use while they're there on the beach. And beside it is a little hand washing station. So the decontamination took place right there and so it had a little bit of water in it and by then I mean I pumped it a couple of times it was dry and I'm steadily just getting as much soap out as I can and lathering my arms up and it's not coming off and when I had pulled my gloves off my my both of my hands were completely covered in a thin layer of oil and it looked like it was a mixture between maybe sweat water, I don't know, but the, my whole hand just was in the shape of the glove in oil. And so while one of them is going and looking for something to put on my hand, another one goes and they bring back bottled water. Well, they both finally end up over there and I'm lathering and scrubbing and they're pouring water on my arms to try to rinse it off and they keep pouring and they keep pouring. And at we did this for probably 30 minutes, but it still was burned. They couldn't, they never did find anything to treat my arm. They finally had to use the bus driver's first aid kit and I almost had to pry it out of his hands because I think he has to, you know, for his safety and for his job, it has to be established that they have a complete first aid kit. Well, I was able to get a couple of little small burn creams out of it and put on my arm and they just didn't have me go out the rest of the day. But he disappeared and never came back, and I requested over and over and over for an incident report. They tried to tell me that, um, oh, this chemical has been out in the water for so long that it's diluted. And they said, oh, well, it's also evaporated. You don't have to worry. It's not that bad. And I've been scared ever since. And I mean, the headaches continue. My chest still hurts. And I'm not the only one. There are so many people that I work with that are afraid to come forward because there's a lot of people that came from other states and relocated here for this job. And they're just afraid of not being able to provide for their families or getting fired. And there are still, I know, three at our company alone, there's 300 people waiting to get into these positions. And in the meantime, they're taking any available jobs that's in our area. And that's just one company. There are many companies out there. And so jobs are so scarce right now. People are afraid to come forward. But... I felt like I have to. I mean, it's a...